just before we close, I'd just like to touch on the final um, aspect of the talk, which is just to uh, describe how you, as people directly affected by AMD, can contribute by becoming involved or participating in research. As we've already mentioned before in the, in the morning session, um, that there's a, a change in the way that we are wanting to do research. In the past, it was heavily led by scientists, researchers, and, and doctors um, in the, who, who believe they're doing research in the interests, of course, of people, but without necessarily the input of people directly infected that would, would have been relevant. Um, but there's now a, a very wide, broad acknowledgement that, of course, um, we need to do this together. We need doctors and researchers to work together with people who are affected by the condition to make sure that, as researchers, we are answering the questions, addressing the issues that are directly relevant to those people with the condition. And there are a number of ways that um, people with the condition can help us. Um, the first is through involvement in research broadly, and the second way is by participating directly in research trials, so trials of, of new treatments. In terms of involvement, um, we need to know from you, we need to discuss what the, what the key questions are, what our research priority, our priority should be. We need to know how best to design studies that are going to be appropriate um, for people who are participating in the trials, how to inform people about those trials. So we need your input on the design of information sheets that are, are relevant to those trials, to people who are considering participating. We need your input, your advice, on how best to design trials so that they are um, taking into account some of the specific needs of people um, with the conditions. And we need your help to guide how we can best share the knowledge um, and the information that we can uh, generate. Um, there are a number of ways that you can um, get involved in this, um, at both the local level and, and more, more widely nationally. So at the local level, um, there are research groups. Um, the BRC, the Biomedical Research Centre at Moorfields, who have representation here today and have helped organise the, the meeting, um, have a group um, that represent patients affected by retinal diseases, including AMD, and you'd be very um, warmly welcomed um, by their, their staff at the desk here to discuss how you might get involved in that. Um, the Macular Society, equally, and, and other groups here um, uh, will be able to help guide how you might get involved. Um, more broadly, I've already mentioned the um, James Lind Alliance, in, in which research priorities were agreed and currently ongoing, there's an NHS action for eye health, which is a national um, um, census, national um, questionnaire, which is being um, promoted to try to identify um, the needs of people um, for eye research and the priorities that people have in terms of the concerns they want to have addressed. So if you're interested in that, we can give you more information on how to contribute towards that. Um, but in addition to involvement, of course, it's possible to um, get involved directly in research trials. And we can also help guide you later this afternoon as to how you might find out more about ongoing trials, both um, locally at Moorfields and potentially elsewhere. There are a number of advantages of taking part in trials. Of course, it potentially gives you access to, to treatments that might be effective but not yet available. Um, it gives you special um, attention, if you like. So people taking part in, in trials are typically looked after more, more actively and are given a bit more time um, from the clinicians and the staff involved in the trials. Um, and, and I think a lot of people taking part in trials find it rewarding to know that they are directly contributing towards the development of uh, treatments that could be very valuable um, in the future. So these are some of the, the many advantages of, of taking part as a participant in clinical trials. Of course, it's important to remember that there are a number of um, considerations related to the commitment um, involved in a clinical trial um, and also the balance of risks, because by definition, we wouldn't be doing a trial if we, if we knew that a treatment was um, safe or effective. And so the risk to participants in a clinical trial is, is less predictable 
than it is in a conventional treatment. They are, there's, a, there's a considerable investment of time um, involved and, and people taking part in trials may, may need to be available for intensive repeated investigations and administrations of, of the, the drug. Uh, but ultimately many people do find it very rewarding. And as I said, um, we will be able to help this afternoon to guide you as to whether you might be eligible to take part in clinical trial and what trials might be available. Does anybody have any questions, particularly about involvement or, or trials? Thank you. Back here. One question I would like to know is, is there an age barrier against anybody taking part? And I specifically ask this because when I was at Warfields last year, <clears throat> young doctor that I saw, um, he said, oh no, you're too old. And it was <laughs> the way he said it. Um, normally I'm not lost for words, but I was that day. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I must confess, if I met him now, I don't think he'd still be a doctor. <laughs> there is, there is um, generally no age barrier um, to participation in research. Um, there may be defined criteria um, for inclusion in specific research protocols. Um, it's, it's very uncommon that there's any upper limit for age barriers. Sometimes there's a lower limit for age. So sometimes we include people only over a certain age. It's very rare for the age to, for an upper age limit, so people are, are excluded on the basis of their age. More typically, exclusion criteria relate to um, other factors that might, might present an increased risk um, to that particular subject. So the inclusion and exclusion criteria for a, a specific trial are designed in order to optimise the scientific value of the trial, that is the, the validity and the reliability of the potential results, but also to protect people against the side effects that um, are either theoretical or, or known. And it's possible that um, if the side effect of a particular intervention is known to be greater at a, at a higher age, then an exclusion criteria based on an upper limit might be applicable. Um, yes, sir. Yeah. Would one have to be London-based? Um, no, typically there's no um, absolute limit. If you, if, you're, if you are able and prepared to travel to, to more fields, um, then there's, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to participate. Well, I'd just like to, to close the session by um, thanking all of our speakers, all the participants um, who we heard from this morning. Um, <clears throat> I would like to thank also the organisers of the, the day because I'm not going to get a chance to do so later um, and that includes particularly um, Heather and Andy, um, Anna and Yanai and also Karen BRC um, and to the Macken Society for their valuable involvement in this day. Thank you very much. And I'd like, um, above all, to thank everybody who has taken the time out of the day to participate um, in, this, in this trial for your, for your interest in, in our work and your interest in engaging with us. Um, so, above all, I'm, we're, we're all very really grateful to you for that. Um, finally, we need to know from you um, your opinion on how this day has gone. And we, I would be very grateful if you, could consider, if you would complete the evaluation forms that are in your bags both to tell us what you think we've done well, but also to tell us what you think we could do better next time. Enjoy your lunch, which I think is ready for you outside, and look forward to meeting you this afternoon. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.